Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the upcoming severe weather throughout the day today, and I really think this could be a tornado event because those parameters look super favorable for tornado development. We'll talk about all of that within this video, but before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe. We do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also highly recommend that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. And then also our very awesome channel membership, which you can click that button next to the subscribe button and check out today. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that this is going to be the only slight risk day throughout the next week or so? Or do you think we will have one or two more? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get straight into this video and first things first, we're taking a look at that current radar and as you can see there's a lot going on. We have some heavier showers going on for the Ohio Valley and, and through the Mid-Atlantic. Also some of those lighter showers going on for the South Central United States. And then also we have a ton of snowfall up there for the upper Midwest and surrounding regions. So there is tons to talk about. But let's first zoom into that snowfall real quick and take a look at that. Now, as we take a look down there at that snowfall, you can see that there is some whites, some very bright whites, and we did anticipate that this would be a heavier snowfall event, but a quickly moving one, and that's why we wouldn't have tons and tons of accumulation. Uh, Minneapolis, as you can see, is actually in rain right now. We're going to see if they're going to switch back over to snow or not, but so far this event seems a little bit warmer than originally anticipated. Although I will say we have those blues going on, which is indicating very heavy snowfall uh, falling down for areas in South Dakota and then in through Minnesota as well. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to transition down there to where we're going to be seeing severe weather a little bit later today. Now I'm watching two areas down here. One, I'm watching for Texas near Dallas and the areas especially west of there. Uh, as we get more of these showers, this is something you watch for before a severe weather event because if you're getting these showers, you know it's gonna it's gonna lower those temperatures a little bit and it's not gonna allow for them to warm up quite as much. Also with the convective available potential energy or CAPE that I always talk about, uh, you look for that to actually lower as you see these showers around, they start to eat away at some of that as well and limit the development of that cape. So uh, areas in Dallas and then west of there, I'm not expecting quite as much severe weather now because we have these showers in the area. Also, Little Rock up northward through just north of Memphis, we had some heavier showers coming through. Those oranges indicating uh, just below thunderstorms, I would say. It was probably very heavy rainfall going on with no thunder uh, for those regions, I guess, from Little Rock up through into uh, Sykeston, it looks like. That's in Missouri. So we saw that going on as well. Now, let's just go ahead and transition up to our heavier showers going on and take a look at some of those. Now we have a lot of this going on, and in those yellows and oranges, like I said, that's where it's heavier rainfall going on. Definitely some flooding for Illinois, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, West Virginia, and through Pennsylvania as well. We do see that rainfall for states like Virginia, Maryland, D.C., uh, Delaware, New Jersey as well, uh, but really it's not quite as heavy on that eastern front. It's mostly out west there where you see a ton of those yellows, a ton of those oranges. Look at the northern end there of Ohio and Pennsylvania where you can see it's starting to mix in with some snowfall actually for those regions just a little bit. Very, very interesting what we're seeing going on up there. We're going to watch for these showers to generally weaken as they make their way eastward with some flooding rains for sure with those, you know, one, two, three inches of rain. And we've seen a ton of it lately. So this on top of what we've already seen so far in February, uh, it's just not going to be beneficial, really. We're going to see tons and tons of mud. It is common this time of year, so we're used to it, obviously, all of these areas in the east. Uh, but it's annoying. It's, it's definitely, definitely annoying. Now let's go ahead and transfer over to the Storm Prediction Center's forecast for today's severe weather and then also the modeled guidance for that severe weather that's going to be coming through. All right, so here we are taking a look at their categorical outlook here from the Storm Prediction Center. And as you can see, as I predicted like three or four days ago, uh, we have a slight risk, and that's exactly what I thought would be happening today. There is room for an enhanced risk, in my opinion. They made a very large slight risk. Usually when they do that, they're leaving room to possibly upgrade that to an enhanced risk. I would think it would be warranted, but I, I think it's right on the fence. You know, if a slight risk could be warranted, an enhanced risk could be warranted. 
We'll have to see, but this extends through Texas, Louisiana, a little bit of Oklahoma, and then Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, and then Tennessee, and maybe even a little bit of Kentucky as well. They're on the very, very southern end. Here's that day one hail outlook, and as you can see, we have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location for portions of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. That's a very low chance. I don't think this is going to be a hail day at all. I think this is a big wind day and a big tornado day potentially, so we're going to be watching for that very, very closely. So on that note, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the outlooks for the wind and then the tornado in just a moment, according to the Storm Prediction Center. So here is that wind outlook, and as you can see, we have first off that green area, which is the 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location, but we also have that yellow region for 15% chance of damaging wind within 25 miles of a given location for Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, and then a little bit of Kentucky once more. For that tornado outlook, and they typically keep these a lot lower because tornadoes aren't as probable as wind or hail, obviously. We don't see tornadoes quite as often as those other ones. Uh, but we do have a 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location within that green. And then within that brown, we have a 5% chance of tornadoes within 25 miles of a given location. With the parameters we have set today, I would not be surprised to see an upgrade to a 10% chance, uh, which I, th I think would give us an enhanced risk. I'm pretty sure that is actually what would do that. So that would be what would give us that enhanced risk that I said was possible a little bit earlier on. Now let's go ahead and take a little bit of a look at that simulated radar here. And at this point, you can see that we're going to have those heavier showers there for the Northeast. And that's going to clear uh, further east by the time we're taking a look at about 1 p.m. today on Sunday, February 28th. You can see again those showers become a little bit less potent as they move further eastward there. Uh, we do see some thunderstorms in the area of Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, Oklahoma, but that's not our severe storms yet in my opinion. Uh, what we see is by time we're taking a look at 1 p.m. on Sunday. Still, we take this further west and you can see them beginning for Oklahoma and Texas actually here by this point. Those little tiny dots, that's going to be what's potentially our severe weather. So let's go ahead and move this on a little bit further. This is maybe about 4 p.m. there on Sunday, February 28th. And look at that band that develops there from Texas up through a little bit of Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri. Uh, that is going to be a good area of some stronger thunderstorms there for sure. Uh, what I'm watching for even more by the time we're reaching approximately 7 or 8 p.m. here is you see first off still our line of potent thunderstorms there, but look at out in front of it for areas in Mississippi, Tennessee. That could be some supercell development out in front of this line of thunderstorms, which is a cold front. Out in front of that cold front, if we do see that warmer air create great conditions for supercells, we could see the development of that, and that's mainly where that tornado threat is going to be in those storms that develop out in front of this. I'm going to be watching very closely for that. This is a classic setup, and we see this time and time again. We see this all the time, uh, and it does oftentimes lead to some tornadoes. So we're going to be watching very, very closely for that. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at closer to the tail end of this when it's going to become even more potent. We're going to take a look at the parameters such as shear, cape, uh, and then also significant tornado parameter, which will tell us the odds of that occurring. And then we're going to watch this one close out. Now, this is by the time we're taking a look at maybe 10 or 11 p.m. here on Sunday, February 28th still. And as you can see, those thunderstorms are going to become a lot more potent, but we're seeing them close closer and closer together. We still see those thunderstorms out in front of the main line. And again, that's going to be the biggest threat for those tornadoes uh, and supercells to develop there. And at this point, it's around central Tennessee down through portions of Mississippi and Alabama. Uh, let's take a look at that shear. And as you can see, we're just looking at a very high shear event, which tells me wind. Tornadoes. I said that a few days ago, and that's also what the Storm Prediction Center is thinking at this point. Wind and tornadoes, not a lot of hail. Uh, I think I said that maybe four days ago we made that video. Somebody could correct me if I'm wrong. It might have been three days ago. Uh, but in those browns, in those pink shades especially, that's where we're taking a look at a significant amount of shear. And that's how these wintertime events go typically. That's why they're so potent in the wintertime because there's usually a ton of shear around with the, all the troughs and ridges. In the summertime, we don't have nearly as much shear around for these tornadoes to develop with. Uh, let's take a look at that cape, and as you can see, we're well over 1,000 for Tennessee, Mississippi, Arkansas, Louisiana, and portions of Texas as well. So this is going to be just sufficient for severe weather. And in that tornado parameter, significant tornado parameter, we have areas that are in the about 2 to 3 range, even 
approaching four, I would say, or even above four. And that's going to be a moderate amount of this. I, th I think we have sufficient conditions for tornadoes to develop at this point, unfortunately. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see um, some stronger ones as well. I also wouldn't be surprised if we don't have any. That's how these severe weather events go. You know, the, you think there's great conditions for a tornado, but it doesn't pan out. And that's all we can hope for. Even some high risk days, some high risk of severe weather days don't even have a single tornado. So we're going to be watching this closely, but we could see it fizzle out and hopefully just not be much of anything. Here we are taking a look at about 1 or 2 a.m. here on Monday, March 1st. And as you can see, it's going to be closing out because we're reaching where we don't see any more of those reds. We see mostly just yellows and greens. And then officially, by the time we're taking a look at maybe uh, 5 or 6 a.m. tomorrow on Monday, March 1st, you can see only greens. So this one is going to close out overnight as we see those colder temperatures reach in. Uh, we will see that generally come to an end. For our confidence tab, we're at about a 3 out of 6 uh, at this point, like I said, these these events are very finicky, you know. We could see uh, a lot of tornadoes, and we could have even been like, we might look back and be like, this should have been a moderate risk, or we could look back and be like, the slight risk wasn't even warranted. There were zero tornadoes. There was hardly any wind damage. That's all we can hope for, but it can really swing either way on these severe weather event events. Like I said before, some high-risk days don't really have much of anything, and some marginal-risk days have a lot of severe weather, so it's just all over the place. Severe weather is probably the hardest one out of hurricanes, uh, snowstorms, and severe weather. Severe weather is probably the hardest to forecast, uh, so that's why our confidence tab is so low, even though we're so close to this storm. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how much snowfall do you think is the most that we will see with this snowstorm that is ongoing for the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes? And James Marr said, I think 8 to 10 inches is the maximum amount of snow with this storm, and I certainly agree. We might get some 10-inch plus amounts, but generally that is a really, really good guess there by James Marr. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons. Sebastian Tao, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Alan Blemo, Adam S., Lair the Pan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Cherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Garys, and John Quilisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you could do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.